So welcome to our first session of the corporate or should I say business finance class, which will look at an overview of the actual financial management function and an understanding of the financial environment that the financial manager works in. Now, effective financial manager is typically one of the defining characteristics between successful firm and failed firms. Because finance plays a very critical role in business and society, this session seeks to introduce the students to the principal role of the financial manager and the decisions that the financial manager is expected to take in pursuing the success of any organization. It also exposes students to the competing goals that could be in the domain of the financial manager in the quest to achieve wealth. Now, at the end of this session, the first session, we are expecting students to be able to differentiate the financial implications of the various forms of business organizations, explain the basic type of financial management decisions and the role the financial manager has to play in that, explain what the goal of financial management is, be able to illustrate the agency problem and how corporate governance can help mitigate that. And at the end also be able to identify the various types of financial markets that the financial manager has to play in the transactions and the financial institutions therein. Now, for you to say that you have fully completed this session, you should be able to know and outline the role of the financial manager, look at what the various forms of businesses are and the implications in terms of liability and access to capital, explain the concept of financial markets and related issues and also be able to explain the concept of wealth maximization, agency, and governance. Now, for this unit, we're going to look at the various forms of business organization, the role and goal of the finance manager, the ownership versus control issues of corporations and the agency issues that arise thereof, and also to look at financial markets. So we start with forms of business organizations. In general, for any business to start up, it must choose a form in which it seeks to operate. It may either choose to be organized as a sole proprietorship, a partnership, or a corporation. And of course, the corporation is the center of our financial management sessions. Notwithstanding, the concepts we learn apply also specifically to sole proprietorships and partnerships. Now, let's look at the sole proprietorship. Now, this form of business is normally owned and run by one person and typically has few, if any, employees. Now, its main advantages is that it doesn't necessarily require a formal charter for setup. In essence, it's very easy to come create. Now, it has less or possibly no regulations. It gives significant tax savings. It has minimal organizational costs, and to a large extent, or intrinsically, profit and control is not shared with others. In essence, the sole proprietor is the one and only person who has the profits and control of such an organization. Its main disadvantages, however, is that it's got limited ability to raise large sums of money because its ability to raise funds is limited to the capacity of the owner. It has, it has all got unlimited liability. In essence, the personal estate of the proprietor is also accessible in the event that the business runs losses that exceed the assets or the worth of the organization. It is also limited to the life of the owner because intrinsically it is an extension of the person of the proprietor and it does not normally allow for tax deductions for the sake of employee health, life or disability insurance. Now, a slightly improved version of that is the partnership, and the laws of Ghana allow for 2 to 20 persons to form a partnership. Now, in general, the advantages and disadvantages of the partnership are similar to the sole proprietorship because all partners, either jointly or severally, are liable for all the firm's debt. In essence, if the firm runs into losses and the firm cannot pay, if one partner has a personal estate that can take it and the others do not have, they will be made to take up the full bill of the entity. Now, its main advantage, like I'd mentioned, are typical and similar to the sole proprietorship. So we would look at that and then move on to the corporation. Now, this is a very unique entity that is quite separate in terms of intrinsic formation from the sole proprietorship or the limited liability. 
Now, for the corporation, it becomes a separate legal entity from its owners. It's allowed to sue. It can be sued. It can get into contracts. It can go into sales contracts and what have you. And the owners are typically known as shareholders or stockholders. And then the most important in the fact that it is able to attract significant quantity of money. Now, the corporation is typically solely for its own, responsible for its own obligations. In essence, the owners, unlike the sole proprietorship and the partnership, are not personally liable for any obligations that the corporation enters into. So now let's outline the benefits of going the corporate form. It's got unlimited life. Because of the ease of transferability of ownership, ownership would perpetuate in years to come even when the original owners have long passed on. It also provides limited liability for its owners, especially as long as no personal guarantee on a business obligation has been given. Now, in terms of that as well, the ease of transfer of ownership is quite easy because it is backed by law. And because of that as well, there is ability to raise large sums of capital. Now, its main disadvantages, because of typically of its limited liability status, it is quite difficult and costly to establish as it requires formal charters. And in some cases, it is subject to double taxation on its earnings and dividends paid to stockholders. And even bankruptcy, sometimes at the corporate level, will not discharge the firm from corporate tax obligations. Now, having looked at the forms of business that any organization could take on, the next question is, how does the role of the finance manager fit in this? Now, the ability of the firm to raise funds, which is a core principle or a core mandate of the finance manager, is dependent on the form that it takes. And so even as the finance manager executes their role within the entity, it could be influenced and limited by the form of business that it has used in trying to achieve its business objectives. Now let's look at the role of the finance manager. The role of the finance manager can be looked at in terms of either four streams or as three, depending on which text or which angle it's being picked from. Now, one of the first decision roles is that of investment appraisal, which is also known as capital budgeting. Now, this particular role has to do with the decision of what long-term investments the firm has to get into. Now, efficient investment decisions, or what we'll call effective investment decisions, have been undertaken when the actual cost of implementing or undertaking that investment is way lower than the value created from that investment. So that when it, it costs less for a firm to invest and results in what more cash flows coming into the organization, we believe that and the firm has actually undertaken effective or viable investments. We also look at capital structure decisions. Now this has to do with the financing. Once a firm or a finance manager has decided what long-term investment it should consider getting into. It must consider how to raise the funds. Now, the firm or the financial manager must make a decision whether it wants to go the route of debt financing, which usually means that total control goes with the role, or it would work with equity financing. That normally entails bringing on board other shareholders to fund the business. Each of these options comes with intrinsic elements such as loss of control, sharing of profits, etc. So that the decision of how much of the firm's capital should be funded by debt or how much of it should be funded by equity is influenced by the environmental factors in which the firm finds for itself. So at any point in time, there is no fixed capital structure that a firm should pursue but should specifically be looking at the environment it faces and how a particular form of capital structure would help to attain its organizational goals. Now we also look at the role or the decision that relates to working capital management. Now, aside from making the long-term investment decisions which require that investment be made into fixed assets, 
they are elements that are referred typically to as short-term assets, which are usually the working capital, the capital that might be worked. And that typically has to do with the inventory and the receivables. Now, failure to manage this aspect of capital that is referred to as working capital translates into loss of profits because that's, that's what makes the heart of the business. Because aside from fixed assets, a firm that is in the business of buying and selling would ultimately fail if it is unable to ensure that it has the right level of inventory, it gives credits to the right people, and ensures that it has cash to manage its day-to-day -day activities. So that has to do with working capital management, a very intrinsic part of the financial management function. And then we have to look at dividend policy. In some instances, this is liaised with a capital structure decision because it has to do with the decision of how much of the firm's profits may be distributed to the firm's owners and on the flip side, how much of it will be retained within the business. Now, when a firm decides that it's going to give out most of its profits as dividend, intrinsically what it means is that it will not have any form of internal funding in the event of future growth prospects. With that regard, the firm is forced to fall on a lot of debt financing to grow. Now, depending on the environment at stake, this could be quite detrimental to the growth of the business. So, in, in summary, you could say that for the finance manager, he or she has to learn to make the right long-term investment decisions, look for the right kind of source of funding to fund these investment ideas, be able to manage their inventory, their cash, and their receivables appropriately. And as profits come in, they must make a decision of how much profits should be distributed to owners and how much of it should be retained by the firm. Now, in all of this, the goal of the finance manager is to ensure that the wealth of the owners of the business is maximized. That means that every decision that is taken must ensure that in the long run, the value of the business is enhanced so that shareholders are better off. However, sometimes there are conflicting goals that may work against this pursuit, and that could be the goal of profit maximization. Seeking profits does not always translate into wealth maximization, as it may mean cutting corners so that revenues will exceed cost and bring in profits. Cutting corners on cost may actually work against the goal of the organization. Thus, that plus other alternative goals could be. So students are encouraged to look at alternative goals that could work against the ultimate goal of wealth maximization of shareholders. Now, when we look at it from this point, another thing you could look at is the fact that for the typical corporate entity, because of the limited liability status, the legal requirement is that ownership must be separated from management. In essence, owners are not allowed to be the ones who manage the affairs of the entity. Now, when that happens, there is always the risk that the manager who has been employed to work in the stead of the principal may begin to pursue interests that are at variance with that of the shareholders. Now, when that happens, we say that we have an agency problem. And in trying to manage that, we may incur what we call agency costs because we may have to give pecs and treats to ensure that managers work in the right direction. One key principle that has a reason to help deal with this is a corporate governance construct whereby a board of governors is instituted to ensure that, to a large extent, management is kept in control and they pursue the goals and aspirations of shareholders. Now, in all of these, after a finance manager has managed or has been able to put together their capital plan or their capital budget, they must fund it. And in funding that, they must walk into the financial markets. The financial market is the market for the trading of financial securities such as equities, bonds, currencies, and derivatives. Now, the financial market, as is the term, like a typical market, is where buyers and sellers meet. So for the financial market, we are looking at a market where finance is created or finance is sold and bought in terms of money. 
Now, depending on the types of financial claims that as is being sold within the market and other characteristics, you may have different classifications. Now, you can have a very broad classification that looks at debt or the equity market. That's, that's typically for capital markets. So when you're looking at capital markets, you're looking at a market where you have access to funds that are in excess of one year, 20 years, 30 years. That has to do with seeking capital. And in that market, you can have the debt capital or the capital market in relation to debts, typically bonds, and you can have the equity market. Now, another way to look at financial markets is in terms of the maturity of the financial assets. Now, the market for short-term claims, such as short notes and treasury notes that mature within a year, maximum, or T-bills, for example, we refer to that as the money mar market. And as already mentioned, the capital market is the market for long-term financial instruments. We also have spot markets, cash markets, futures markets, where we trade financial assets on the spot. And then with that, you could look at a case where we could have a cash flow pattern which maps up in totality to the relationship between the firm and its financial manager's role and the financial market. In a typical firm, the financial manager together with the firm's authorities will issue securities which are traded on the financial markets. The, the funds raised from these securities that are sold are used to invest in viable assets, be it short-term and long-term assets. These assets are utilized, they generate cash flows, a portion is paid to government and other stakeholders, another portion paid as dividend to shareholders and debt payment to the creditors, and the rest of this is reinvested as cash flows in the business to grow the business. Now, to a large extent, that brings us to the end of session one, looking strictly at the ability of the finance manager to be able to take the right investment decisions, fund it appropriately, work the capital, and make the decision of how much to reinvest in the business, also knowing which markets to go to when they need financing. Thank you. And make it a point to take a look at your reading list and study appropriately.